Hey everybody, I've got a kind of different video for you today. And uh, the, this is kind of a, an offshoot of last week's video where I was out in the field making some photos and my favorite photo from that day was a backlit bull elk with his velvety antlers picking up all the light and it was quite lovely. And I wanted to show you the making of that photo from start to finish. So uh, if you saw that video, you'll see the first couple of minutes of this will be very familiar to you. So I'm starting with uh, showing you making the image out in the field. And now I'm progressing into um, the selection of the final image that I want to work on and then the, the editing, the processing of that photo as well to get to the final image. So uh, anyway, just jump right in. I'll, I'll be back after showing you that what happened in the field and I'll be back in the computer in a minute to um, talk about image selection and editing. So enjoy this first little part and I'll see you in a minute. There's a nice bull elk out there. I'll do a quick video of, of them. Just gorgeous. The light's really flat. I'm gonna come back to this area once we start getting some light and see if by some chance I get like a magic bat backlit situation where it can highlight that uh, velvet in his antlers. Typically, he's gonna come out of that meadow and head into the forest that way as the light comes up. So that's what I'll be counting on. I'm back with that group of bull elk. And as hoped, they've come closer to the road. So the light's coming up. We still don't have light coming over the mountain there. But once that does, all this, everything out that way is gonna be backlit. So if these elk move across through here, that would be what I'm hoping for. Um, and it looks like that might happen. They're kind of working their way back this way. I can just pop, swing the door open and shoot straight that way into the trees. And uh, if the timing's right with the backlight, I think that has real good potential with the, the velvety antlers really glow in backlight. All right, that backlit scene's about to happen. You can see the foggy breath. I'm underexposing this to keep the background dark. Ooh, there they are. Ooh, this is going to be nice. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm underexposing this. The stop, 1.7, and that is keeping their velvet and the fog. Shoot, I'd like to be a hair closer. Yeah, yeah it'll be all right. Um, the velvety breath, the, the velvety breath, what? The velvety antlers and the breath are lighting up in that backlight. And I want really want that to pop from that dark background. So a minus 1.7 looks really good. And bang, bang, bang. Ooh, ooh, that's pretty foggy breath. That was nice. There's tree, there's a bunch of trees to contend with here. 
So I gotta wait for little moments where they're in between trees. Now the, the sun has gone away, went behind a cloud. Okay, well that backlit, the sun's coming and going behind that cloud, but that was awesome little short, what that, was that, like 30 seconds I had of good light, but I got lucky with the elk being in the right place. Well, that's over. They crossed the road, the light's gone, so that was awesome. Uh, once in a while, a little plan like that comes together. And luckily, I was patient this morning. So it worked out great. Okay, here we are. Uh, I'm back, and I hope you enjoyed that little segment there um, of being in the field making that image. And now let's just start. I've got uh, 14 photos here on the frame or on the screen. And I shot more frames than that of this scene, but I just picked out some of them that'll kind of give an idea of uh, what this scene was like and the different images that I made and try and find the one that I want to edit and then we'll edit that. So kind of starting with uh, this scene was lovely and uh, I feel like this this is one of the first frames that I shot and this was the whole herd had kind of moved into this spotlight. Um, the biggest bull is the one off here on the left, and he would ideally be the subject that I would want to have like the main subject. But currently, I've got this other bull with a nice set of antlers back here that's blowing some fog into the air, and the light is hitting him more than all the others. This image is too cluttery for me with too many animals and too much going on. So I'm gonna keep looking and the whole herd is moving left to right. So uh, now most of the herd is clearing out, but it's still way too cluttery. Now we're getting closer. Uh, so most of the herd has moved off to the right here and now I'm left with three animals in the frame plus a bison back here. Did anybody notice that bison? He's a little distracting and we'll talk more about him a little bit later. Um, but having three subjects in the frame usually works pretty well. Um, so this is okay. Uh, I'm not, I don't love it yet, but if this was the best I got, I would process it and it would be a pretty nice image. But let's just see what else happens. Now it's getting even better. So most of the herd is exiting off to the right. Now I've got the two big bulls kind of alone in the frame there. So this is pretty good. I'm gonna look at the next few frames or as that bull gets closer to the other one and let's just see. So we're actually right there, that first frame, his ear is intersecting with his antler right there. And then the next frame, I like seeing the ear better. So this is a better frame in my opinion than that frame. So now that would be kind of the, my favorite frame so far. And I think they're an appropriate spacing from each other. So this is actually one I would consider editing. I like this a lot. And now he's getting, I think, a little too close to the other bull. Uh, your opinion may vary, which brings me to a good point here. All of this is totally subjective, both the image selection process and the editing process. So I'm not trying to tell you like, this is the right, this is the best image, and this is the right way to process it. Uh, I'm trying to show you my thought process because mine's gonna be different than yours, and that's one of the great things about art. Everybody's is different, and it would be really boring if it was all the same. So don't necessarily think of this in terms of the, this is Steve's a moron because he didn't do it the way I did it, or Steve's a genius and I'm gonna do it the way he did it, because neither one of those is true. It's kind of more about in the middle of uh, I'm editing these, these the way I like and the way I want them to turn out uh, and hope that you will be able to do that with your own images as well. Uh, so anyway, that said, uh, I think we're getting a little too close together here on these bulls. And now suddenly the this big bull, he walked in front of and they overlapped each other and I, I'm not even gonna show you those images because uh, they don't work at all. But these actually work, but now that all the other elk have cleared out of the way, now we're onto something the way I uh, kind of envisioned this image being. And I think it's pretty cool now that I have one definitive subject. And uh, he's standing there in beautiful light with the foggy breath. 
and all that stuff. And I shot a few frames of that. So I'm just gonna pick one of these to work on. So that's my image selection process. It, it kind of goes that fast of like, I just kind of run through them and, and uh, try and look for little nuances that make things better or worse. And then I'll decide an image to start working on. So some of the challenges that I've got here in editing this image that I immediately see right out of the gate is there's a few bison in the background. I've got this one here, this one here, and another one over here. So those are distracting elements. I also see real subtle in here, there's a power line. And there's another power line. And this is actually a power pole. So I'm going to definitely... Uh, use editing and not necessarily, um, you know, cloning those out or anything like that. Uh, but I'm my vision for this whole image from the beginning was to make it very dark and moody and really have that elk and that spotlit sagebrush be real punchy. So I'm going to plan on just darkening that background to the point where those are not very visible at all. So let's now move into the develop module and start working on this image. Uh, I'm gonna start with a crop. And immediately I see like over here in this lower right corner, I've got a bright spot where the sun's hitting that I don't like. Uh, and I'm gonna crop that out. So I'm just gonna first just take that. I'm gonna use this big tree over here as kind of a frame frame to the right edge to keep my eye in there. And then uh, I gotta look for a similar frame over here and it might be just as simple as using this other tree, just like that. So now I've kind of got some symmetry with a frame there and a frame there to keep me in the center of the screen. Uh, and that looks pretty good. Uh, I could consider doing that same thing, getting in, punching in even tighter with this tree. And let's look at how that looks. The problem here is that I lose some of this action going on here where uh, if I am zoom out a little bit back here, you can kind of visualize this. Uh, I've got some light punching in here under a little arch. And in a perfect world, this elk would have been standing under that arch, right? But that wasn't the situation I was given and I only had a matter of, I don't know, 10 seconds if I would have had the opportunity to move to put him underneath there, uh, it would have been over before I made that move happen. So this is what I was given, and this is what I took, and I think it's lovely. Um, and I'm not loving that crop yet. So I'm actually gonna punch in a little bit more, but I do wanna leave this kind of circular thing. And you'll see that a little bit more. I'm gonna try and bring that out a little bit later. So I've kind of lost my frame situation that I was thinking about there, but it's still there in a sense, but not quite as heavy and dominant as that right edge of the frame. But anyway, I like this crop. So this is a great start. Now I, I talked about wanting this to be dark and moody. So I'm just gonna straight go to like one stop darker on the exposure. Uh, and I'm mostly looking at the background and the entire scene here. I'm gonna punch up this elk and some of this light a little bit later, but the scene now seems about as dark as I would want it to be, roughly. Um, and now I want these highlights to really get brought up. And now we're starting to bring out some of the light up here and certainly the light across here. This is a little too bright. I'll deal with that later. But just bringing that highlight slider up 100 points, which is a lot, brings a lot into the image. Um, what should we look at next? I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop in a vignette here as well. So I'm going to do minus 5, 10, like minus 15 points on a vignette. That'll help darken down this right lower right corner a little bit, and it'll kind of help keep the attention here in the middle of the frame where we want it. Uh, let's see. Next. I think we've added a bunch of contrast here with the cranking up the highlights and darkening the exposure. That has also kind of increased the saturation. I'm gonna drop the saturation down like 20 points. I like the subtle green in that sagebrush, but I, I do want it to be subtle. And now that I've kind of been working on this, I want it even darker. Yeah, that looks better. So now I'm down to minus 1.5 stops on exposure. Now, 
I'm going to get out and do some local adjustments. I really want to bring up the light that's in this area, the elk and that sagebrush. So I'm going to create a new mask. I'm going to use the brush and I'm going to come in here and just hit some of these areas that I want to bring some more light into about like that. And I'm going to crank those highlights up even more. So I'm going to just take them all the way to like a hundred again, really punch those up. And then I'm going to add some clarity that will also brighten up that, uh, highlights a little bit and let's see. How's that look? And I, the more I keep adding it, the more I like it. So let's just see where we end up here. Like 50 points on clarity looks pretty good. That's a lot of clarity, but it doesn't look too crunchy to me in there. So that looks good. Um, but I think I even want to brighten it up another click. Point one, point two more on exposure. So I just kind of brightened up and added some clarity and punch into that area. I think it looks really nice. Uh, while I'm in here, I'm going to do another mask and just real quick knock down some of the highlights down here. So I'm just going to hit those, take the highlights down to zero, and I'm actually going to do negative clarity on those a little bit too. Okay. And that's that. So I'm done with my local masking. And honestly, as I look at it now, that's kind of, that's kind of what I saw. And so I would consider this a done image. And uh, this is kind of my process for, I go through things pretty quick on the computer. Um, I'd rather be out in the field making photos. So my editing, I generally don't take a bunch of time. Uh, and then this would be good enough for YouTube videos and for Instagram. If somebody wanted to print of this, then I'll open it back up and really get into it and hit it hard and spend the time on it to do, you know, proper sharpening and noise reduction and look for any kind of little things. Like I'm, if I was going to print this, I would go back in and actually probably do, uh, clone out these little areas where you can just very subtly see the power lines there. But people aren't going to notice that on Instagram and on YouTube. So I'm not going to waste my time with that right now. Uh, if I do want to make a print of it where I want everything to be just right, I'll go back and do that later. So this is a finished image, except that as I, I decreased the saturation by 20 points on this earlier, and I mentioned like the, the color is not an important part of this photo. And whenever I have that situation where the color really isn't doing anything for me, I will experiment with black and white on it. And uh, so I know even when I took this, I was like, yeah, this is probably going to be a black and white image. But this is a great starting point. And now I'm going to go to a black and white image and see if it works. And if it does, then I'm going to edit it again. So I'm just going to click on the black and white, make it black and white. Um, now I've got a bunch of uh, profiles that Adobe includes in Lightroom. And I'm, I, I would typically just kind of rifle through some of these and see how they look as I'm scrolling through them and find one that looks like a great starting point. And I've already done that in this B and W O two really worked well for what I wanted it to look like. So that is a great starting point for me. So let's just start there. And then I'm going to look at the amount, you know, starting at the 100. So there's nothing. And then it cranks up all the way to 200. Now 200 is too much for me, but so somewhere around 100 is actually looks really good. So that's where I'm going to start with that. Uh, so now I'm editing the black and white version, which I really like. Uh, I'm going to say I want it even darker than the color version. So I was at minus 1.5. I'm going to go down to minus 1.8 here and really make that background nice and punchy and dark. Um, and I also, I think I want this kind of tree canopy stuff that's picking up some of that beautiful light to, to really be punchier and pick up more. So I'm going to grab the clarity slider and kind of crank that up and down and look see what it's doing to the image. And I do like what it's doing when I add clarity to the entire image because it's picking up more of that uh, tree canopy. So like 
cranked all the way, it's too much, it gets too crunchy, but I am settled at like plus 40 points on clarity there, and that really helps bring out some of that uh, tree canopy action. It looks really good. And as I look at the image, I don't see anything else I do. As you see, the, the bison that were in the frame, we cropped one out. There's one back here in the darkness, and then there's another one right back here in the darkness. I think they're gone. Um, these power lines are there if you're looking, but there's a lot of cluttery tree branches and stuff there, so most people probably aren't going to notice that. Okay, so anyway, that's going to be the final image for me. I'm going to call that one done. I love it. It, uh, it kind of turned out just the way I could have hoped in the field when, when that scene was developing in front of me and I was able to make that image. So uh, I'm psyched to show you the whole process start to finish. And uh, I would invite you to please let me know if you like this kind of thing. I'll do more of this if you like it. So let me know if uh, you want to see some more of these start to finish videos. Thanks for watching. And please visit my website to learn more about some of my upcoming workshops. I do private workshops in the Tetons. I'm full for the fall season, unfortunately, already. So, uh, well, fortunately for me, it's great. And for the people that got them. Um, I'm going to also, I have on my website the Winter Yellowstone Workshop, which is great. That happens in early January. And Africa, which happens in late January and into February. And uh, so please check out my website there, stevemathis.com. And you can also buy prints and learn more about me there. And I appreciate you watching. And again, let me know if you like this. I'll make some more. And also let me know if you didn't like it. And uh, that's good, good feedback to have as well. So have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.